Speaking of Pelosi, perfect segue. <laughs> Here she is. From the Justice Department. He's uh, said that if he had confidence that no crimes had been committed, he would have reported that. Um, he made a number of other statements about a president not being able to be convicted of a crime while in office. Um, tell us, I know you've made one comment already this morning. What is your reaction to his statements this morning? Thank you, Gloria, for your question and for the invitation to be here today. It's also wonderful to be at the Commonwealth Club with so many members of the club and uh, concerned citizens, especially my family, my daughter Christine, her husband Peter, her father-in-law Phil Kaufman, and my, our grandson uh, Octavio. And uh, welcome. <laughs> And I understand I, my son Paul, our son Paul is here, Paul Jr., someplace. Paul, welcome. In any event, uh, this is a family affair for us always. We always like to hear, whether we're present or viewing or listening, uh, to what is of interest uh, to our community. And I want to salute uh, Gloria Duffy. She's just so remarkable, and we're so blessed to have her in the role that we have. While she mentioned what I was doing while they were having a late Central America-style dinner, I'll tell you what she was doing during the day. And this was so remarkable to all of us because it was um, we were there to see what was happening. Uh, Madeline has Russ. All right, so we've got an ear on this. The second she, she, she gets to, to the answer, um, well, we'll take it live. But to your point, you were saying it's a delicate balance between responding to her caucus. Yes. Because the cries have become louder and mm -hmm. protecting the capital, our republic. Yeah, I mean, in other words, and she, I think, in that kind of a, more of a mother hen role with regard to the caucus is going to say, like, you guys may want to do all this stuff, but I know that it may be bad for us politically. We may, we may hand the presidency back over to him in 2020. All kinds of bad stuff could happen. I don't want to take that kind of risk. Mm. But she has a responsibility to the Republic, capital R, mm. and whether you like Trump or you don't like Trump, if you just erase all the names and just say you have a, you had an investigation. Person X. Yeah, President X. You had an investigation where all these facts came out, and that investigation, however, could not lead to any kind of conviction or accountability by definition. The, the rules say you can't. There's only now one body that can do an investigation with the gloves off. Congress. With, and that is Congress, and that is her. And so, uh, you know, she has a big challenge today. And it's, in some ways, it's no win, uh, because you got to sacrifice one for the other. But I don't think that, uh, I, I think she's being painted into a corner mm. by uh, the president's actions, by Mueller's statement, and by her caucus. And we'll see how she handles it. I want to come back to that, but your takeaway, Asha. Three takeaways. Three takeaways. Uh, yeah, that, that I think Mueller was saying it's here. It's been a big day. First, he said, no hoax. He said, no coup. And then he said, you can impeach. And, you know, the first two are just as important because they are directly contradicting the narrative that has been put out by the White House. And with the third one, I think oh, it's... sorry, sorry. Let's try again. Special counsel, well, now former special counsel Mueller. And what he had to say, and as Gloria indicated, he did say... If he saw any evidence that the president was not um, was innocent, he would have let us know. If he had any evidence that the president was not uh, guilty, he would have let us know. But he didn't. He didn't. And I think that was very, very important. While I have the deepest respect for him and thank him and his team for present the presentation of facts that will further lead us to uh, help us in the Congress and in the courts, this is a very valuable contribution. I am gravely disappointed in the Justice Department for their attitude, uh, their uh, misrepresentation of the Mueller report to begin with, their uh, hiding behind something that you could never find in the Constitution, that the president is above the law, and their misrepresentations even under oath by the Attorney General to the Congress of the United States. So we, have, as we will continue on our path, which was led by our six chairmen who are magnificent, Adam Schiff, who's coming, Jerry Nadler, Judiciary, Elijah Cummings, um, Government Reform and Oversight, Maxine Waters, Financial Services, uh, uh, Richie Neal, the President's Taxes, Ways and Means, and um, uh, Eli um, Elliot Engel, Foreign Affairs, all of have a piece of this. Last week, we had three victories uh, in the courts. One, Elijah Cummings court, uh, won the 
president's accountant that they have to share the information. Two, Maxine Waters, the Deutsche Bank decision, which is they have to share the information. And three, not related to the Russia investigation or that, but related to other problems we have with the president and his view of the Constitution, is that uh, we, uh, the court said that he cannot use Defense Department funds to build a wall, to use that money to build a wall. <laughs> we also had a victory in Adam Schiff's committee in that the Ju- Justice Department, under threat of subpoena and, their, and legal action, uh, uh, decided that they would give certain important documents to the committee, and that was a victory. That was four days, four uh, decisions in five days, very important to advancing our getting the facts for the American people, getting the truth for the American people. Where they will lead us, we shall see. Nothing is off the table. But we do want to make such a compelling case, such an ironclad case, that even uh, the uh, Republican Senate, which at the time seems to be not a, an objective jury uh, will be convinced of the path that we have to take as a country. So you mentioned the victories in court. You mentioned the com- various committees doing their investigations. Some in Congress want to go further. Representative Steve Cohen of Tennessee opened a dedicated impeachment inquiry, Judiciary Committee potentially. Are you... Uh, Judiciary Committee one. I, well, open a specific investigation of in, of impeachment. No, so, uh, you mean he as a member of the yes, committee? Because yes. the committee has not right. taken that position. So yeah. uh, there are Democrats in Congress who want to go further than yeah. the existing yeah. committee investigations. How do you feel about that? Do you think there's a oh. role for an additional uh, dedicated investigation? Well, let me just say that I'm very proud of our, our House Democrats. They've been very, uh, shall we say conscientious about how they've reached their decisions, and I think it's like 35 of them out of 238, or maybe it's 38 of them out of 238 have said that they wanted to be outspoken on impeachment, and many of them are reflecting their views as well as those of their constituents. Many constituents want to impeach the president, but we want to do what is right and what gets results, what gets results. And we have to remember... So, yes, there are some, and, and the press makes more of a fuss about the, two, the 38 than the 200 who are over half of the Congress, after half of the, of the Democrats in the House sit on one of these six committees. So they're all on a path of finding more information. Just to recall, Moni, if you were not born then, but during the... Uh, uh, what would be, not become impeachment, but the impeachment investigation of Richard Nixon, it took months and months of a Senate committee that was solely dedicated to uh, researching uh, impeachment before they then decided to have articles of impeachment come from the House, which were never executed because the House and Senate agreed. It was a Democratic House and a Democratic Senate. We have a different scenario now. So the The case has to be very compelling to the American people. So we are legislating, and we wish the press would cover more of that. Uh, Thank you, Gloria, for pointing out some of the bills that we have passed and sent to the Senate about gun safety, women's rights, equal pay for equal work, uh, uh, violence against women act, gun safety, the list goes on, uh, climate action now, the list goes on. But in any event, we're legislating. We're investigating, and we are litigating. And we're going to, as we go down the path, make a decision based on the strongest possible case to get the best results for the American people. And the action taken by uh, the um, special counsel today, uh, I commend him for the work that they did to present the facts. Now we have to get it unredacted for the public, but nonetheless, and for the Congress, by the way, They'll say to me, we'll show you. And I say, that's not it. We want the American people to know. Well, you're going to show me, and then I'm bound by classified uh, rules of the House not to tell anybody? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But in any event, I think that you know everybody wants justice. Everybody wants the president to be held accountable. 
in the most serious way, and everybody believes, I mean, I'm talking on the Democratic side, that no one is above the law, especially the President of the United States. We'll come back to the remedies, the 2020 election and the run-up uh, to sure the election. There'll be some questions further down in the future. Of the but let's, so let's talk about legislative priorities. Uh, you mentioned some of the bills. Um, I didn't know okay. this, but... Okay, so House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the target of key questions in the wake of listening to Robert Mueller this morning. And I heard similar uh, words spoken that would echo what we heard from Congressman Nadler uh, on, on what we heard. Uh, namely, we will continue on our path. Uh, and nothing is off the table and no one is above the law.